want to color your line art without this happening? Ah! Ah! Oh, look at these nasty little pixels. Not getting filled in. Hey, I'm Shy Fox, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you, dare I say it, the fastest method for coloring in your line art in Clip Studio Paint. I do believe it's the fastest method, and I'm willing to fight about it. I recently started doing line art with textured brushes. Ooh, texture. You know, so that makes filling it in harder because of all the textured edges. So the little pixels don't necessarily get filled in. So I needed to revisit the question of what is the best method and fastest way for filling in line art. I've heard about the magnetic lasso tool. So I gave that a try recently. I got frustrated with it and was inspired to look into other methods as new features have been added to Clip Studio Paint in recent years. And I'm excited to say that my new method involves new features I've never used before. Plus a few other tools and tricks to make coloring quick. Subscribe for more Clip Studio Paint tips and digital art tutorials. So here's one of my artworks that I was doing recently and I've swapped from the completed version to just the line art so we can go back and look at how to color this. And I chose this one too because the hair on this is crazy and it was at first really kind of an interesting process of trying to figure out how to color. So the very first thing we want to do is make sure our line art, whether it's on one layer or in a folder, with several layers all in it. So these are all my line art layers. And I just put them in a folder so that they all can be together and that this feature I apply called set as reference layer applies to all of them. But if you just have one layer all alone as your line art layer, then you can just click this lighthouse button set as reference layer to that layer. So I've got it set to the folder. So now we're gonna head on over to our fill bucket tool. And instead of using the default um, one that comes up, we're gonna switch to enclose and fill. Now I'm gonna make sure these are reset back to default so that we're all looking at the same thing. We're gonna first change this one to all enclosed areas, including transparency. That's this bottom one. And then down here, we need to put this one as reference layer. So it knows to reference the line art layers that we have. And we may need to adjust the close gap feature, but we'll start with the default and see how it goes. This may be something we adjust that's dependent on the artwork itself. So the next thing we need is a layer that goes underneath our line art. So mine's in this folder. So I've made a new layer underneath, not above, underneath. With my new layer selected, I'm going to draw a big shape around the hair. My mission is to color just the hair and I'm going to go around and do just the hair like that. Pretty close, that got it pretty close. And so to compensate for the areas that didn't get filled in, I can either draw a shape around those areas or I can take my fill bucket tool and fill it in. Now the settings for my refer only to editing layer uh, fill bucket look like this. And again, we have reference layer selected and we may have to adjust tolerance and close gap depending on what we're working with. And you can see it left a couple pixels like here, here, and here, annoyingly enough, whereas our enclose and fill didn't do that. Uh, so we have to go in and compensate for that. We can just draw them in. Uh, the thing with the enclose and fill the way I did it is it did fill in some other areas. So you may wanna just go back and erase some of those areas with either like a selection tool. You can select selection for referred layers. Try and select just that area and remove it. After testing many methods, this was definitely the fastest way for complicated hair like this. And it was even faster than the fill and drag method, which again, only works well if you can get those settings just about perfect so that you don't have all these like little gaps and pixels showing, which I literally kind of like hate that. So that's why I really like the enclose and fill. You can even do small amounts at a time if you're worried about selecting too much at once. Try that and just go at it that way. 
I know a lot of people get really confused with the fill bucket tool and what settings to even include. So if you're gonna fill things in one at a time, um, let's see what we can do to compensate so that maybe we don't have all these pixels. So the close gap feature will compensate for when we have gaps in our line art. So for example, on the shirt, uh, where the shirt kind of meets the neck, there's this nice little gap here. So if I wanted to fill that in, oops, it overflows into the neck area. So we can turn up the closed gap. Oh, perfect. And now it won't overflow. So you gotta just check your settings on that. Maybe increase your closed gap. The tolerance is how much the fill is going to compensate and fill extra, if that makes sense. It's like extra filling helps with these textured brushes. So let, we have it on the high side at 72, I guess. So, nope, oh, that's way too high. But as you can see, this is filling in all these like pixely areas kind of nicely. So that works reasonably well if we were filling in a large area, but uh, it's not perfect. So we turn it down. That, uh, that actually looks pretty good. And area scaling is good too, because you can increase how many pixels it fills outward if you pick a positive number. So it's at zero. Let's change it to three. Right. So now it's going to try and compensate roughly three-ish pixels outward. And it's not an exact science, but you know, you can just play with it. If you wanted to do the opposite and scale downward you could do that too but i'm not exactly sure when you would want to use that as you can see look negative four pixels inward so maybe useful for very specific uses i hope that gives a better understanding of uh, what close gap tolerance and area scaling do whether it's for refer to only editing fill or even in close in fill we've got some of these settings so that area scaling is important to compensate for the textured line art that we have. See this awkward little space right here? I'm going to use enclose and fill. Ooh, works pretty nice there. And again, if it's not doing a perfect job, you might have to touch up a few areas to make it perfect. But overall, the enclose and fill is going to really cut down your work time spent on mindless filling. If we use selection for referred layers and we make sure we have the lighthouse again selected and I like to put on the plus mode so that I can have additional selections made not just one so we can select everywhere it's selecting the the negative space and there's a gap here so I'll select here as well so now I believe I've selected a whole bunch of the white space in fact I know I have white space in behind these like pieces of hair like like these, these like gaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all these gaps as well. Had to turn up the close gap just there. So it would close that gap. So all the negative spaces selected roughly. And we're gonna hit that invert selected area. Invert selected area button. It should invert our selection, of course. And now we can just fill it in. Oh, it was so close, but that's okay. We can compensate by selecting whatever was left. It'll just take three whole seconds. Okay. I think I left some of my line art here white. So that's why it looks like that. So just ignore that. I would also encourage you in this situation, if you don't have as much chaotic stuff going on, the enclose and fill might actually be pretty fantastic in this situation as well. If I had a simpler artwork like this, I could just find my enclose and fill with those settings that we had and just, we. Gosh, why won't it select this particular strand of hair? All right, I increased the tolerance. Another tool I really need to show you to make sure you're using it because you absolutely need to be using this tool is the clipping tool, the clipping feature. And you know, this is Clip Studio Paint. So you really better be using the clip feature, okay? So what you're gonna do, when you have an area that's colored in, we'll use the shirt just cause it's brighter and easier to see. The shirt, we want to add some shadow to it, some shading, some extra coloring. 
click it and then make a new layer above it. So directly above, and we're going to click the clip to layer below button. This is clip studio paint and we are clip studio buttoning to below. Yeah, that made sense. Okay, so pick a, another color to shade with and whatever pen, pencil, whatever. And it's just gonna magically fill only where you have pixels on that layer below, which is all the light orange color. And now it won't let me color over here. It won't let me color over here and it won't let me color over here. So we only can shade in here. This is not really probably how I would shade this. I probably did not shade it this way. How did I shade it? Ooh, like that lots of other colors in here that you could blend in over top whatever um, and not even have to worry about going outside the lines boom and we really don't need to waste time not using the clip feature of clip studio paint i'm gonna have to look into if that's actually the reason why clip studio paint is named clip you know it's probably named clip because little comic clips I'm just making stuff up, but it sounds really good for the sake of this tutorial. So this tutorial was really a demonstration of how to do quick coloring using two important tools, the enclose and fill, as well as the refer only to editing layer fill tools. The selection tool was an additional tool that I showed you uh, that pairs well with these other tools to get those fills done the way you want. It would be up to your discretion which of these three tools is suited to your line art for filling it in, and that would just come with some practice in using them. Practice with the subtool settings and your preference among these tools. And then the clipping feature was the final tool to do your shading and detailed coloring without wasting time trying to color inside the lines in spaces that you had already defined. If you found this video helpful, give it a like. And if you agree that this is the fastest possible method, let me know in the comments. And if you believe there is a faster way, well, prove me wrong again in the comments. Okay guys, thanks for watching this video. Have a good one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe because this is YouTube and that is what you do on YouTube when you like a video and you wanna see more from someone like me. Okay, have a great day. Bye guys.